All right, let's keep talking about the commute right now because the controversial congestion pricing plan that is back and it could be in place by the end of the year. And while some want Governor Kathy Hochul to pump the brakes on the plan, Mayor Adams is siding with the governor saying it's necessary. She heard the residents who stated the $15 was far too much, but she also knew that we have a real capital uh, problem, you know, billions of dollars that we have to fix our system and make sure our system uh, continues to operate accordingly. It's the lifeblood of our city. This would, on all fronts, be devastating to hardworking families, and I think it was pretty clear in this last election that they don't want a congestion tax. It would increase traffic on Staten Island, increase air pollution, and we would have to pay a third hefty toll to get into Manhattan. So obviously the debate continues. The MTA could vote on the new congestion pricing plan as early as next week. Joining us this morning to discuss these latest developments and what it means for New Yorkers is spokesperson for the Riders Alliance, Daniel per Perlstein. Good morning, sir, and thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. All right. So MTA Chairman Jenna Lever and Governor Kathy Hochul were both at a political conference in Puerto Rico. And it seems like this plan really shifted into high gear when everyone came back. So what what happened? Well, subway and bus riders have been working for the better part of a decade to secure this. We've held now two governors accountable and we've won again a transformative plan to fix the subway to improve reliability throughout the system, to deliver dozens of additional accessible stations, and to extend the network to new neighborhoods. So, Danny, I guess the question is, do you have any more details here on the plan, right? We got limited details on a 40%, and it's $9 for cars, right? But the big topic for so many was also these exemptions, right? And who is exempt from the toll and so on and so forth? Will there be more exemptions, especially for residents who are coming from areas like Staten Island or New Jersey? So we're going to hear more from the governor later on, but I think the bottom line is overwhelmingly people coming in from Staten Island and New Jersey are already taking public transit, so they're already 100 percent exempt. The small number of folks in cars, many of them can follow their neighbors and get out of the car, and those who don't are overwhelmingly much higher earners than public transit riders and can afford to pay for what's a very valuable privilege for them of driving in the most congested part of the United States. I still don't think that's going to fly with those folks just because they, they make more money. That's not going to fly for them. But uh, the original $15 toll was expected to raise nearly $1 billion in revenue, right, for the MTA. So how much will this new plan raise and what will happen if it actually doesn't go through? Well, you know, we're not celebrating until the first tolls are collected, right, because we've been here before and we know that to expect you know, the unexpected. Uh, but we do anticipate several hundred million dollars, and we know that drivers will benefit from this program on day one, right? So it's going to take some time to raise the funds and fix the subway, but the driving conditions will improve right away. The ambulances will speed up immediately. Buses will speed up. And frankly, businesses will save money because they're spending less time wasted in traffic from day one. Yeah, I mean, Governor Phil Murphy said he was just in London and that he who has who have congestion pricing, and he said that he waited longer to get somewhere, and that congestion pricing made no difference in an area like London. That was from Governor Phil Murphy. But let me ask you a two-pronged question here, right? Because I hear what you're saying, and many folks on the opposing side would say, well, there was mismanagement of funds by the MTA, right? That's issue number one, and that they shouldn't have to pay a toll for the mismanagement of the funds from the MTA. What do you say to that? The MTA is accountable to the governor of New York, right, for decades. Right, The MTA is subject to state law set up by the legislature for decades and has many, many outside watchdogs. We know that costs to build in this country are high, but the overwhelming reason they're high is because of fiscal austerity, because we haven't invested and because our agencies don't have the muscle memory of doing great work like back in the era when they built the subway. And frankly, Governor Murphy is speaking out of turn. He's got no idea what he's talking about. Congestion pricing has been in effect in London for 20 years. What is he comparing like 25, 30 years ago to today when the city is much bigger and more crowded? So, you know, what he's saying really doesn't hold up. Yeah, and the second part, the second prong to that question was the environment. So we had Vito Fasello on, Staten Island Borough President, and others who have also said that there's an environmental impact here that it's going to affect their area and cause more pollution. Our co-plaintiff in the suit to get congestion pricing started is the New York City Environmental Justice Alliance, and our other one is the Sierra Club, the nation's oldest environmental organization. Every environmental organization at the city, state, and federal level supports it. So it's a little funny that suddenly 
Vito Fisella is christening himself an air quality scientist, which he's not. He's never expressed these turn concerns otherwise. Neither have any of the other opponents. They're entirely facetious and self-serving arguments. All right, well, listen, uh, that debate's going to keep going on uh, until the end of time. <laughs> but uh, we want to, before we let you go, it is a race against time, right, uh, to get this toll in place. Before President-elect Trump takes office, uh, we have five Republican lawmakers from New York. Those They sent a letter to the president, uh, president-elect, asking him to permanently halt this plan. Do you have a timeline uh, in order for this to be in place? I know some timeline said that this was going to be in place by December 29th and now also uh, plan for it the first for it to happen the first week of January. Everyone knows the next several weeks are critical, and that's why those lawmakers are so loud right now, right? Because Trump isn't making policy. The person making policy now is Governor Kathy Hochul, and they, those folks want her to fail, right? They are her political opponents. They don't want to see her put in place a transformative program, and they're capitalizing on this moment to try and drag her down and try to scare her again away from the finish line, away from the better, healthier, more fair city and state that we deserve. Yeah, when, when you say political opponents, you mean Republicans, or are you talking about, like, some of them are Democrats, Josh Gottheimer, Phil Murphy, those are Democrats. I mean, granted, they're from New Jersey. But what do you mean by a political The opponent? folks in New York who are leading the charge are some of the leading candidates for governor in 2026. Let's just say that. All right, Danny Perlman, we're going to leave it there and see how all of this plays out. Uh, appreciate your time from the Riders Alliance and your perspective this morning on congestion pricing. It is certainly a talker. Thank you so much. Okay.